Hello everyone, I'm Chase Lee reporting for DallasMovieScreens.com and welcome back to my continuing coverage of the 2016 Dallas International Film Festival and I got another one to review for you guys and that would be A Tale of Love and Darkness. This is actually Natalie Portman's directorial debut and I thought it was, I thought it was okay. I thought it was a little better than average but it, I still wouldn't want to watch it again so let me explain myself. Let's get real and break this down. So we'll start with the writing and directing. I think the way it's written is probably my core uh, problem with the movie. Now, uh, if you guys don't know what this movie's about, I got my phone right here. Let me read you the synopsis. In a tale of love and darkness, the years leading up to the creation of the state of Israel are characterized by escalating tensions between Jews and Arabs, conflicting that mirror the troubled marriage of Amos' parents, both of whom are refugees who fled to Palestine for safety. While the story is told through the eyes of young Amos, so their son, much of the narrative revolves around his mother, uh, Fania, uh, played by Natalie Portman, an intellectual uh, raised in privilege. She, she now struggles to accept her adult life as a poor newcomer in a fledging land married to a failed academic. So Natalie Portman is essentially the main character, told through the eyes of her son, because we start out with the movie with uh, her son uh, as he's older. He's, you know, um, he, he's in his last, you know, few final years and stuff, and he's kind of reminiscing, reminiscing on uh, this time that was the creation of Israel. And uh, so that's essentially the story. The writing is where I have the most problem. Not because of the story or the way it's structured. Even though after I left the movie, I didn't really care for the way it was fragmented because it was kind of jarring and it kind of left like an emotional kind of weight missing from the movie. I So I'll give them props on the storytelling. I thought for the way it was uh, told and the way it flowed, I thought it flowed very well even though it was kind of jarring uh, just seeing fragments of memories, but they all make sense in the end. The only problem is that I didn't feel any... Um, any feeling for Natalie Portman's character because she is kind of depressed that she lives this refugee life and she's not, you know, uh, what she's used to or whatever. That's not a really compelling story. I would have much rather seen the characterization of uh, Israel coming to fruition and have his parents in the background instead of the foreground, instead of having Israel in the background. Because I think the, the conflict between the Jews and the Arabs uh, is more interesting than uh, his, that kid's marriage. I mean, that that's just me, though. I, I would have much rather have seen that. Now, listen, in the movie, they touch points uh, on Jews and Arabs, you know, kind of conflicting or whatever. That, that was great. That was some good stuff. It just wasn't explored uh, that much. And it did take a backseat to this movie. So I didn't feel any weight or any sympathy or any, you know devastation for Natalie Portman's character because one she was acting like a you know like a bratty child almost and two I just wish that was in the background and uh, the creation of Israel was in the foreground so that's my main issues with the movie however let's get to to the directing I think for uh, directing Natalie Portman did a fantastic job I like the the kind of tone she uh, cast over this movie it is very devastating and depressing, but it uh, was an important time uh, back in the 40s, and I think she does capture that essence very well, and the performances are great, and the story is it is fragmented, but it still has a through line uh, through it, and so I think as her directorial debut, she does a great job, so I have no problem with her directing, it's just more of a story and characters that I have an issue with. As far as the acting goes, everyone does a great job. I, I enjoyed Natalie Portman's performance. I enjoyed everyone else around her. The kid was very good. I, uh, Like I said, there was a lot going on in the story. They just didn't explore uh, in more important things than other things. But the acting all around is, is, is great. Um, Cinematography-wise, once again, very great. I love the gold look, the gold film look. Because this, uh, this movie's set in the 40s, so it's got like kind of this uh, golden glow to it and everything. So that was really cool in uh, some scenes. Then, you know, it'd be very uh, dark and dour and blue. And the, you know, the depressing scenes casting some interesting shadows on the characters and stuff. So the cinematography was really well done. It was really great to look at. And uh, there was one shot with Natalie Portman uh, walking uh, horizontally with black birds uh, flying up above her. Um, and that was a really powerful shot. And that was probably my favorite shot. It stuck with me. Once I saw it, I was like, Wow, that was pretty good. Um, cinematography, really well handled. As far as the editing goes, 
And the movie's an hour and a half long. And why I have such an uh, issue with the editing is because I wasn't invested in the characters or I just didn't really um, care for their uh, depression, if you will. So it felt longer than it should. Um, I was never... Okay, I'll take that back. I was bored a little bit only because I was like, is anything major going to happen? And so it did take a while for it to actually kick in for me. But once it did, I kind of got on board with it. But I just, in the end, I wasn't attached to anything. So I was just I was just like an empty vessel. But hey, listen, other people might have felt differently. That's, that's awesome. Uh, just for me personally, not for me. So the pace of it did kind of drag along because I wasn't invested in it. Um... So with that being said, I still recommend this. I will never watch this again. Well, actually, I take that back. I might take a rewatch just to see if anything changes. But as of right now, it's just kind of an average movie. But I want to put it a little bit above average because it is a well-made film technically. Um, it's just story-wise and character-wise I have an issue with. But I think uh, people will enjoy this movie um, on many levels. I mean, uh, someone might say, you know, the marriage was... Uh, it's supposed to be in the foreground, so, and like they might like that better than what I just uh, said. So I don't know. Teach his own. It's all subject subjectivity, baby. That's that's what we're here for. So, uh, with that being said, I'm going to give A Tale of Love and Darkness a C plus. I think it uh, is a well made movie. Um, it's just got some story flow and issues, but uh, yeah, uh, tell me what you thought of this movie. If you are going to see it, or if you have seen it, have you even heard of it? Comment the place below my face and let me know. But uh, this does give me uh, hope for any future project Natalie Portman does want to direct, so I will give her that. So, oh, um, that uh, that is it for this uh, movie review. I'm Chase Lee, reporting for DallasMovieScreens.com, and uh, yeah, just tune in ne uh, next time for whatever I review next. See you guys later.